Right, hello everybody, and a big warm welcome, a very warm welcome, to the Geek Lab. It's the middle of summer here, so I've got the fans running. And uh, it's been a long time since we've done a full uh, Geek Lab tour, and the Geek Lab here is now restored, finished, painted, decorated, whatever you want to call it. So I thought it's time for a look around. Now not everything is on display, some stuff is in storage, so you're not going to see everything on this one. But there are videos on my channel where you can see other stuff that's not on display. Uh, there are many videos about many of the stuff that is on display here. So as we come across those items, I shall mention uh, that there are videos. Uh, it can be gameplay videos, repair videos, pick up videos, reference those items. And there will be a list all below the video with links to those videos. So, what we're going to do, because the lower lab has only got the piano, and there are videos about that, and the tape deck, and that's covered in boxes at the moment, we're going to start down the stairs, and have a look at the stuff coming up the stairs. I will be switching those big lights there off. Well, there you go, close look at them, uh, because I don't want them flashing lights all over the place while we're trying to show you stuff. So, switch them off, and let's finally get a complete tour of my computers, consoles, other retro gear and geeky stuff. Hope you enjoy. Right, and because Fluffy is so well trained, I was just starting the tour by pointing the camera up the stairs and Fluffy appeared around the door with tea. Thank you Fluffy. You're welcome. There you go, bonus extra. Mm, tea, we like tea. Mm. So let's start the tour and here are the... Thank you. You're welcome. Here are the, uh, the stairs to heaven or to the Geek Club, whichever. You might say, and we have some posters here from Replay 2013, uh, one of the stalls there, they do them themselves. These are available, I've forgotten what the website is, I think it's here, uh, posterlt.com, there you can get them there. And as we go up the stairs, we've got some movie artwork over the top of the stairs there, and a very old Star Trek calendar, but I like the pictures. Down here we have this little thing, which is uh, those who get it will get it, those who don't won't. Let's leave it to that. <laughs> okay, at the top of the stairs we come to the window, and here we have my 1965 Akai reel to reel player. There was a video uh, about this pickup video, and I think there's two videos, but I'll put them in the list below. The tall Darth Vader, that's also got its own video, list below. And a 1950s lab Geiger counter, there's a couple of videos on that as well. So, list below. And down here we just have tools, other stuff. And a light for an 8, I'll just put my tea down. Uh, there's a light there for 8mm filming uh, from the 60s still works. So that's good. Over here is a nod to my uh, physics work. Uh, an Atlas poster, half covered by this Apple HD cinema screen, which doesn't, I don't know if it works, we found it in the skip. Uh, we don't have a power supply for it because they're 60 to 100 pounds, so I'm not going to bet on it unless I can find one, but it looks good there, so we left it there. Also at the top of the stairs we've got this which Fluffy found at the market. Looks like the bad guy out of Street Fighter. Looks like his helmet, so we got that. Also sitting at the top of the stairs is the lightsaber. Okay, there's the main lab. Bit larger than the old one. But we shall work our way around. What else should we do? So start in the corner here and then work our way around. All that, all that, and then come along here and down here. Okay, we'll start here, which is what I call, got to back up a bit to go to one shot, 
So I call my 8mm corner, you've got the 8 bit corner, that's the 8mm corner. We've got two projectors at the top here, both are 8mm or Super 8, both are silent and both are 1969. And they're cool, I've got a video on that one, I've got videos on both of them, so I shall put them in their own little list down below. Uh, my Facebook addict uh, tin. You have to put money in there if you're uh, whenever you put stuff on Facebook and a Z80 processor sitting there. Uh, this is the Bush radio from the 50s, which I restored to the best of my ability. I haven't electrically restored it, but I physically restored it, so you can see that in the video link below. That's the box to this projector here with some uh, little 8mm trinkets there, splices and stuff. Uh, that is the box to the 8mm editor. One day when I get some 8mm film I can play with, I shall edit it and show it. That's the, uh, that's the editor itself. Uh, no, sorry, he's off for transferring uh, from 8mm to digital or whatever format. This here is an editor for used when splicing. And you see there, there's its box, movie editor, and we have the movie light there. Down below, we have a real 8mm camera itself. And to the right there is just where I keep uh, little bits and stuff to do with cameras and other little tools. To the right, the side of my uh, tripod which sits there, we have our Star Trek Starships corner with some posters, some cards up here, as you can see, and the collection itself. Now there is a big playlist of videos on this, uh, link below again, uh, there's the manuals inside the bin. Uh, so yes, this is growing all the time, and up there is the uh, Star Trek Universe poster. And uh, when you're down, a few little uh, teddies and stuff. And then there's the Ads Regent uh, Seawall Terminal from 1981. That was built because it's state stamped inside. Uh, down there is where I keep all my joysticks, so that's a bit of a mess. And below there is some Poundland stuff ready for review. Okay, on to the 8 bits themselves. Uh, two guns hiding here a uh, Sinclair gun and a PlayStation 2 gun from Namco. That is the haunted cupboard where the ghost keeps coming out of. Uh, attacked us on a live show. Well, said hello, sort of. Okay, here we have, first of all, I Commodore VIC-20. Uh, 1980. This particular one was given to me by UK Retro Games a few years ago. And once again, thank you very much, Mark, for that. It was very nice. Uh, 3K of memory. It's got all the expansions, knock it up to 12. Behind that is the much rarer Commodore 16. Uh, this was a going to be a stopgap between the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 but just as it was launched memory prices tumbled so the market for it evaporated as it was created. Next to that we have a Commodore 64 original bread box which I bought from Ash. It even has a couple of very tiny, very hard to spot laser burns at the front where <laughs> I forgot the laser was pointing at it. Uh, behind that I have my Commodore 64C which is my first ever retro computer that we bought. Uh, this one has a mark on the space bar where something dropped on it from a great height so it's got a nice wound. Uh, Acorn Electron, roughly 1981. I have no tape drive for that so it's not really used much. ZX Spectrum Plus 2. Now I don't have much luck with the 48Ks which is there uh, getting softer on time so I use the Plus 2 much more. In front of that, an Amstrad uh, oh, CPC 6128 128K with uh, a floppy disk. Doesn't get much use that one because I don't have much software for it. But there we go. Now, here we have an interesting beast. The Commodore MPS803 printer. This was a dream of mine as a child because it goes with the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. Uh, I bought it 
with that Commodore 64 from Ash. And it's very nice to have. It doesn't get much use, obviously, but it does have its uses now and again. Next to that, one of my favourites, an Atari 800XL from around 1984. These dates might not be uh, exact, but I haven't looked these up recently, so I've forgotten off them. So, about 1984. Uh, this one is a 64K model. This was donated to me by UK Retro Games. Uh, at the same time, well, similar time to the Vic 20. So, yes, once again. Oh, that came in the same package as the Acorn Electron. So, well, as usual, thank you very much, Mark. And over there, hiding behind the fan. Sorry, go the fan running because it's very hot in here. Uh, there's a DK Tronics, which is what it is. It's a case for a Sinclair 48K. Basically, take the guts out of the Sinclair and stick them inside there, and you have a proper case. I don't have any videos on this uh, as I'm filming, but check check checklist below in case I've done one since. Behind there is uh, Alan Sugar's own computer, the Amstrad Notepad NC100. He designed that himself. So let's drop down a level. And here we have a few zip drives 1, 2, 3, 100, 250, and uh, 100. Plus one for uh, floppy drive for Toshiba, old Toshiba laptops and the USB floppy drive. We have a Macintosh 2CX which has a hard drive which to get it running you have to open the hard drive and manually get the fl the platters running then it does seem to run fine but get no image from it so it's buggered. Uh, behind that is the incredibly rare uh, Tatung Einstein which I bought and uh, spent 14 hours restoring the keyboard get it working still works fine yay job well done Next to that is a Macintosh SE, there are, oh, yes, there are gameplay videos and hardware videos on that, so I will put a list below, there was also a video on that, you can see what issues there are, video below, uh, links below. Next to them is the Macintosh SE, this one has 30 megabyte hard drive, uh, it's about 1984, something like that. Uh, buggered. It does. It did work, but when I was fixing the floppy drive, I electrocuted it, and now it has the memory issue. It does the pattern that comes up on the screen, so I don't think it's going to work, and I can't find memory for it. So for now, it's buggered. Uh, little Pac-Man wind-up toys and some uh, pan pipes. Uh, next to that, we have the Vectrex, which is another bad boy. Great system, but this one doesn't work. I knocked the uh, cartridge when I was playing it, and then I've just got a dot on the screen. And I can't find what's going on, so at the moment it's dead. But I do have videos on it, so links below. Yeah. Next up is my bookend, a Nintendo DS bookend. Uh, there's a couple of PlayStations back there, American Snares, which I don't have a power supply for but I'm not chasing to get one because it's in a bad shape so I don't expect to get much out of it and a stylophone in front of that a TRS-80 uh, portable which we do use as a serial terminal so it is still very very useful a little microphone hiding back there so let's go to the bottom line we have this typewriter thing which has not been viewed but once I make a video, there will be a link below, so check if you want to see that anyway. Uh, power supply for testing stuff, uh, some tape drives. This is an IBM uh, 6746. Sometimes it swaps over and goes on display, but at the moment it's a turn to go underneath. And an Olympia adding machine from 1960. Uh, that's the box to my GX4000. Under here is various bits. Uh, there's an Atari Junior under there. Projector which doesn't work. A wood processor. This is a, da -da -da, a sharp wood processor. Uh, I shall get all these out at the end of the video so you can see them. And there's a Commodore 64 floppy drive in there. And 
that's on the that's a electromechanical typewriter the roll videos on these links will be found below cup of tea that'll be right back okay refreshed all right uh tv number one which um, below, below it has a Ferguson video store computer computer video player and an Amstrad GX4000 sitting there playing burning rubber on the TV probably hear the music playing now and again uh, below that is an RM Nimbus VX2 which I recovered from the skip and repaired it was just a blown capacitor uh, there was an Atari 7800 hiding beneath there and an IBM uh, personal system to model 50 which needs a new battery and configuration files but apart from that it does appear to work and a quite rare IBM 48695 five and five and a half inch floppy dryer okay moving on here we have Ace which is a uh, late 70s Oops. Sorry, it's another machine has just fired itself up uh, a late 70s uh, console sort of semi pong machine and behind that is the Intellivision uh, which is about 1978-79 class machine behind there we have the SIG Saturn uh, a SNES this is a little uh, portable computer on there which will be reviewed one day uh, Nintendo 64 and a Sega Master System 2. Uh, beneath there, we have two ga uh, GameCubes, PS2, original Xbox, and original Xbox Crystal. And um, behind there, as uh, Mega Drive 1 with a 32X sitting on top, Dreamcast just in front of that, uh, SNES, and a Mega Drive 2. Now there are laptops beneath there. I shall drag them out in a bit and show you them separately. Uh, here we have my sound desk, the tape drive, CD player and the paint boxes uh, monitor. And here is the paint box itself. Uh, this is donated to me and apparently worked on the original Doctor Who. It, well, the Doctor Who in the 1980s. It's a process of restoration, a very long process and there's some Star Trek stuff, glasses and plate sitting happily on top of there. The side of the paint box we have uh, some some of its discs of which there are many and beneath we have power suppliers and the floppy drive. Uh, sitting in front here, these aren't normally here but I thought I'd bring them up for you, is a Panasonic MV50 uh, mid 90s and a Stashi 1200E VHS camcorders, a large beast. That one's late 80s. Uh, well, here's the case to it. Uh, this is a CB system I'm working on. Uh, if you're on Facebook group, you may have seen that one. Behind there is my sound system. They are 800 watt speakers with 15 and a half inch bass speakers. Uh, these are my lights. Well, there's a light there and laser system there and a laser system behind there and Different boxes which is sort of Collapsing at the bottom there, but collection of boxes so Oh, there's a old reel-to-reel -reel player back there, which you can't really see Okay on this wall we have our Donkey Kong stuff the retro gamer magazine that I appeared in uh, uh, the original replay poster from the 2010 and my BBC Master which was donated to me by a museum in Cumbria where we did a uh, show for them, well we helped with the show. Up on this slanty bit of wall we have handhelds, uh, the Dingu, the PSP, that's an original one, a uh, Game Boy Pocket uh, the Mercedes Game Boy, which I made my painted myself. A Lynx one, uh, which I need some work for that work. And a Lynx two. Beneath them, I get back here. I can sort of see 
for my games which are in no particular order at the moment I need to get some units to put them in so that's all loose for the new missile command poster and here is my uh, Apple G5 which needs memory, hard drive, uh, optical drive uh, so basically it's uh, the world's most expensive footstool at the moment. Second TV, couldn't power this side on because I'm going to plugs left powering all the other stuff on. My uh, savings box which is an actual uh, cash register hiding under there. Here's the IBM 5150 with a uh, PC Junior monitor and in that box is a second VIC-20 which is actually almost in new condition behind there in bags are all my adapters for the different computers I need a sop of tea, be right back okay here is my, uh, well here's my canvas print of different characters from Nintendo very nice, got that for five or four quid <laughs> bargain uh, my mobile. This is a 1981 uh, Bell & Howell RM850 computerised slide projector. I got that off the museum when it was broke. But me and Ash got it working again and there are videos on that. Also there's the IBM 5150, there's videos on that so don't forget to watch. In the corner uh, there's a wooden crate. This is full of cables. Uh, basically I've got four bags. Uh, comms cables, video cables, power cables, and uh, comms, video, power, and uh, controllers. And they're all in separate big bags and then divided into little bags themselves so they don't get mixed up. Uh, beneath that is an IBM mainframe hard drive that's 300 and odd megabytes, I believe. Well, since I've looked at that one. Uh, on top is my camera collection. I've got the 1969 Polaroid, uh, a 1960s Kodak Brownie, a 19. These two front ones is Coronets of 1960. That's a 1970s Olympus, uh, a 1920s Box Brownie, and a well, it's a bit about the Polaroid there. And that's the box the Polaroid came with all its little bits of kit. And of course, if you're being retro, you've got a dress retro. So there's my uh, 1990 England jacket. <laughs> I sometimes wear for shows and videos. Uh, there's my drinks machine. We have to have tea on top. So there it is. And there's my uh, oscilloscope, which we found dead and restored. And a 1985 chess computer. Uh, making a noise over here is the Amstrad CPC 464 which is playing Star Wars by itself isn't that nice and next to that is an EMAC which at the time of filming has a problem with the optical drive we also have uh, a Sony mini disc player a Sony Walkman and an Ericsson phone which is identical to the one I had as a child and next to that is a Sun Ultra 60 which at the time of filming is ill but we think we can get that back going so that's that lot let me get the laptops and the word processor out and uh, we'll be right back okay the laptops we have a compact Presario uh, Salon Salon M I have no power adapter for that so that's dead we have these sharp these are actually got two of these uh, I've only got one out these are sharp Oh, what model is it? It doesn't say. Anyway, it's on the back somewhere. But i uh, got two of these. Neither of them have got hard drives, but they, apart from that, they seem to work fine. So I need to get hard drives sorted for them. Uh, there's a little Dell Latitude there, which does work fine. A, oh, an IBM ThinkPad. Uh, <coughs> what was that? So, 570. Uh, that doesn't have a power supply. An Aval Spotlink, which is, excuse me, 
quite a rare machine. Uh, that doesn't have a power supply at the moment, but that is actually a portable serial terminal. Yes, I'd never heard of one like that before. Until it was given to me when we bought the IBM 5150. Uh, so next to that we have the Toshiba T1000XE, another skip that I find. Works fine. Uh, a Toshiba T2130CS, got a couple of these, this is the main one. Uh, so put that one in display. Next to that, well that works fine, is a Compaq uh, 2X6SL SLT, which is an unusual one, with a keyboard that comes out. Again, no power supply, they keep asking too much for them. So, uh, we did it works, we've got some power to it, but not enough to power the, the hard drive, but it does start up. So, uh, that's the, uh, the laptops. So, I've got a couple of 16-bit machines to show you, finally. Uh, I shall put these away and drive them out. Right, and for your delectation, here's a 16-bit crew which usually lives behind the monitor due to uh, lack of space to put everything on display. So we have an Acorn Archimedes, there's a playlist of uh, hardware and software for this on the channel. Amiga 500, uh, I think we've got a pickup video for some of these. And the Amiga 1200 which has never appeared in the video as yet. So that's them. So, uh, I hope you've enjoyed probably bits I've forgotten to show you there's all sorts of stuff in here uh, there you go, quick look around best you can on video and uh, I hope you've enjoyed all that and uh, if you have subscribe for more nuttiness and check out all the links below to different videos regarding uh, this scoof in my lab so, yes, hope you've enjoyed. Subscribe if you have. Uh, and any questions, leave below. Other than that, thank you very much. You need to quit being a dirty, you're a dirty boy. <laughs>